Hey everybody, how we doing today? So today's video, we are going to do a tour of Smathers Beach and how to fish it, catch tarpon. I'll be your guide, Steve. And we also have Bird. So we are on the west side of Smathers Beach here in Laddick Boulevard, US 1 South. That's the old uh, White Street Pier there, some public beach area, and it wraps around to Smathers Beach. All right, so here we are on the first flat. This is the main flat. I recommend this area here for any people that want to do wading, sight fishing, fly fishing. Not now, but because you can see how milky dirty it is. But when the wind is calm, this will be crystal clear waters, white sands. So you can wade it and sight fish fairly easily. Um, I prefer this one for that because it opens up into the wide open ocean on this side here. Uh, definitely usually get a lot of bait because you always see the birds in this area as well. All right, so we're here on the first rock jetty along that first flat sandy beachy area. And we're just gonna walk along this uh, jetty here because of the wind coming from the east to the west. Very rough on this side, but you can see how much it knocks it down on this side, so nice and calm. So both the bait fish like it over here as well as the tarpon. So uh, this is a prime area here, even though the water's dirty. So you can see how much of a difference it makes from the windy side to the calm side. All right, we're out here at the end of the jetty. So you can see how much wind is blowing and causing disturbances on this side. And then we've got the wrap around and then it gets calm again. So what we're looking at is this side over here, the bait will kind of lay up because it's a lot calmer. And then you also have this area here will be a good ambush point for the tarpon to wait for stuff to get pushed over and around this edge. And then they could just chomp on it. Uh, one key thing to remember, even though this water is dirty like this, just on the outside is clear there. But also the juvenile tarpon that we're targeting, they're born and raised in this mucky water in the back of the mangroves. So they're used to it. They don't mind it. So it's not a big negative. So, uh, great spot right here on the edge there's a jetty about halfway along the beach there it's a it doesn't go out as far uh, i don't really hit there um, usually it's a very tourist packed area so I don't worry about it then you got all the beach here and then we get to the last jetty which is the second place I generally will fish although we have beach it's basically imported sand that they come out dump it spread it and then every morning as you can see they come through and filter out all the seaweed otherwise it stinks up to high heaven but the actual water part of it is a mixture of hard pack on the bottom. Then it goes to man-made sand that gets spread out and then natural silt, which this would pretty much be consisted of is silt. So that's why anytime you get these breezes coming out from the open ocean, you're gonna get churned up brown water. So most species of fish don't really care for it, but the baby uh, tarpon don't mind it at all. Um, it's nutrients for the minnows and bait fish, so they'll stack up in here like crazy. And uh, in the afternoons when the tourists are gone, the bait fish will move up and so will all the predator fish, jacks, tarpon, snook, even redfish occasionally. Okay, here's the last jetty on the far west side. Windy side, calm side. Uh, be careful when you're walking through here. Um, these type of rocks can be very sharp, very uneven. The good thing is they're pretty much concreted in spots, so they're not like roly-poly, but very uneven. But the water ones get covered in slime, so it can get uh, very slippery. I don't recommend coming in flip-flops. These suck when they get wet because my feet slide around. Uh, much better to bring uh, tennis shoes or uh, wading shoes, something with some grip and support. But we're out towards the end here. Take a look. Calm side, rough side. Same deal with the current wraparound ambush spot. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is, is when the wind is coming out of the east, 
I like to come to this jetty since it's the first one um, that provides the first amount of protection. So all the fish out in this area will come behind this one to hide out. And just like freshwater trout fishing, they like to go into the front of the pool because the fish in the front gets the food first. So that's why I like to target this way, especially in the conditions like today. So as you can see, it's five o'clock. This is after the time change. So you can kind of see where the sun is now. This is probably even earlier than I'd recommend coming out. But if you want to come out and walk the beach, hang out a little bit, but probably halfway between there is when I would actually show up since I know where I'm going to be and what I'm targeting. Uh, but you can come out and just start scouting out the beach and these uh, jetties. Look for the little dimples of bait. Um, you can might get lucky and see some tarpon rolling, but usually it happens a little bit later. But definitely look out and see if you can find little dimples, little flicks. If you can find the bait, you're going to find the fish. Oh, well, since we've got time, the outfit of the day, we've got the All About the Bait Company logo black cotton t-shirt, $15 free delivery no taxes let's live in florida and then one of the new all about the bait company logo hats bunch of different color options check those out allaboutthebait.com you can also walk the uh, boardwalk or malacone right along the edge there and just see if you can spot uh, sight fish for anything i generally don't find much right along the seawall because it's kind of nasty uh brown water from all the uh weeds deteriorating but i do find uh schools of uh pilchards running the edge there a lot of little sharks and rays and stuff but you might see some uh, tarpon or snook running along there as well yeah check this guy out nice spanish mackerel just jumped out try to catch a bait look at that i'm catching it i don't even have this fishing rod nice spanish Get, 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 get. <laughs> Bait was just running up here. It jumped at him and landed on the beach. See the dimples there. Okay, it's 530. That's roughly where the sun is at. That's the beginning of my fishing time. So what I'm going to do is just sit here and just scan the waters. I'm looking for our bait. Um, I don't necessarily see them, but I see the little ripples in this corner. I'll see them busting out of here, getting hit by fish. And then, of course, I'm looking for tarpon rolling. Uh, where the tarpon are rolling will designate where I'm going to start fishing. See all that bait getting busted on. They're getting chased by something. Oh, little pilchards. See them got stuck in the rocks. Oh, oh, see Boom, just right there at the shoreline. Just getting hammered by schools, probably jacks. That's what we're looking for. All right, just saw my first tarpon roll right in that spot there. I can see some little bait getting busted on right there. So that's where I'd walk over there and start casting. And you can see where the sun is at after that first tarpon roll. So getting into the magic hour time. All right, sun is setting. So right in the beginning of the magic hour, when that glare of the direct sun is gone, uh, this is kind of like the prime time. So what I'm looking for is those spots where I saw actual tarpon rolling. Not seeing a ton of them. I've seen a few out here, uh, just the one around there. Seeing a lot of bait getting pushed up right along the beach there. Um, so my things would be is to work the outer edge there, sight fish any rolling fish, and then I would probably transition to this corner and then I would start walking the beach where I saw a lot of bait getting pushed off in that area there. So now's the time where you got to really make some decisions and really go after your best looking spot. Uh, the other thing I look for is the ripples are all naturally going the same way, but then you'll see the wake of a school of bait fish kind of going against it. It really stands out and then I'll be throwing at those as well. So that would be my strategies to choose from. So 5.45, that's prime time. So this is definitely where I'd be putting the line in the water. Oh, there's tarpon rolling right there. So the majority, oh, another tarpon rolling right there. So I could see three or four different bait schools just getting chased around. And then the tarpon are just every once in a while, I'll see a head pop out or jumping out of the water like a trout. But this seems to be the area that they're kind of congested in there. 
every once in a while I'll see a bunch of bait schools get pushed up along the beach but those might be jacks and then I would definitely throw right at that beginning there because I think those are the ones that are just sitting on the bottom anything comes by they just eat them these guys over here are just playing and chasing so uh, yeah definitely would be a good day to be fishing well I think I'm gonna head out even though I would still keep fishing we're only about maybe halfway through the magic hour um, I usually call it when I can't really see the or I barely can just see the rocks and how to walk back that's dark enough when I'm on my kayak it's when I really can't starting to lose the color of the actual kayak then I know it's time to go uh, tarpon rolled right there too oh that was a mackerel <laughs> magic hour can't beat it and lastly you could just walk this beach keep an eye out for fins they're rolling 10, 15 feet from the edge right here. You could wait if you need to, but don't really need to. And just keep a looking eye out for those bait schools and start throwing into them. Yeah, right over there. Well, a word of warning though, if you stay out in the evenings like right about now, especially when there's not a good breeze like today, no seams and mosquitoes will tear you up. Just on the other side of the road there is just the mangrove swamp area there, the salt ponds. So that's just a straight up breeding ground for my uh, mosquitoes. And then when the sun comes down, they come out and eat the tourists. So long sleeve, long pants, deep, and uh, you'll be okay. Or wait for a real windy day like today. All right, let's talk hardware. Think light, okay? You're going to be wanting to cast small little lures so you can't use anything heavy. You want to be able to whip those little baits out really far. Plus, you don't, you're not really having to worry about uh, pulling fish out of structure or locking the drag down. Okay, These are juvenile tarpon. They're not very smart. They jump. Okay, that's all they do is run a little bit and jump, run a little bit and jump, run a little bit and jump. Okay, so mine, I'm using the Esky uh, light rods. The, they're 10 pound rods. I've got 10 pound braid and I throw on a 20 pound uh, leader. Boom, perfect. I can whip a little uh, two and five eighths inch paddle tail with a one eighths inch jig head and I can cast that mile. Okay, and cover water, see some fish rolling way out, I could hit them. All right, you start getting too heavy of a rod, you don't have that whipping capability and you can't throw the small baits. So think light. All right, let's talk about baits because it's all about the bait, all right? Now, if you go out there, put the rod down, take a seat, just watch what's happening there, uh, kind of like what I showed on the video, you'll find out what they're chasing, what they're eating are basically one inch to three inch glass minnows and pilchards. I'm running right along that surface and just running around in schools and those fish are sitting down and coming up and ambushing them. So right off the bat, you want to match that hatch. So what I've been using is either like a two and five eighths inch paddle tail, okay? Or you can go up to like a four inch paddle tail. The four inch doesn't match exactly that one to three inch, but it's slightly larger, so it gives a little bit of a profile, murky water, and sometimes just a little bit bigger, still falls in there and gets that aggressive bite that they just, opportunity, they go after it. You just don't want to go five, six inches and thinking that's it. Because um, the way these schooling fish work is that they start seeing what they want to eat, they put on the blinders and that's all they go after. Anything outside of that window, they just disregard. So you really need to match the hatch down here. Uh, Fly-wise, I'm throwing this one. It's called a uh, mangrove muddler. Three inches, falls right in there, white. It Once it gets wet, it tapers down quite a bit. It's got that little bit of a stripe to it, a little bit of sparkle to it. And it matches basically a pilchard glass minnow that's out there. And that's why these work. Uh, action, what you're looking at, again, these baits are, are just basically right at the surface, okay? They're not skittering on top of the surface like um, finger mullet where they're busting, making a bunch of activity. That's when I would say, yeah, throw a topwater lure, but that's not the situation we're looking at. You'll just see them just uh, barely underneath the surface, light ripples sometimes, okay? And that's what you want to match with your artificial lures there. So... The 1 8 ounce jig head with a small paddle tail, okay, perfect. Cast it out, slow retrieve, fast retrieve, I can keep it up. You go heavier than that and then it starts submarining 
and then you're down in the, the murky water where they can't see it and they're not looking to feed anyways. Fly, same thing, nothing weighted, no eyes, okay? No barbells, you want something that lands on top and then when you start stripping, it just kind of sinks a little bit and goes right along that surface. You're just matching the hatch there. Now, normally I'm a live bait guy, I would say, yeah, go out there, throw a cast net, get some of the bait that's right in where you're fishing and put that out there. The problem being is in that basin, there's thousands and thousands of bait fish in there and there's just schools of them, okay? And it's kind of milky, dirty water there, so they don't have the exact great visibility. So you live bait one on a hook, throw it out there amongst thousands, what's gonna happen, okay? You're just, your odds are one in a thousand, they're gonna pick your lure. Uh, you go to the artificial and you can just cast it out, bring it in, cast it out, bring it in. You see a fish roll, you keep putting it in front of their face until that time they come up and they see your bait and then they grab it. It just increases your odds. So kind of that's my kind of breakdown. That's kind of what have I figured out works there. So it's all about the bait. Alrighty, so that's how to catch a tarpon here on Smathers Beach in Key West, Florida. Uh, I don't think I can make it any easier besides me going out there and hooking one up and handing you the rod. Uh, hopefully you found the tips helpful. I, I imagine you can use these same things in your uh, home waters up and down the Keys or anywhere in South Florida. Uh, if you did find the tips helpful and you want to support the channel, come check out my web store at www.allaboutthebait.com. I uh, sell cool fishing gear, but also, more importantly, I got the jigs and the pedal tails you need to catch these tarpon down here, so check those out. Also, if you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon at uh, Key West Kayak Fishing. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Keep an eye out. My next videos are going to be about uh, how to rig up those live pilchards, plus how to catch the cereal mackles in the channels. Bye.